So I'm going to try and keep this video as concise as possible, really. But the 3.1 Orna update is quite a substantial update. So the first thing we need to talk about a whole new range of sprites for for every building in the game and just general improvements to the UI overall. So looking at the buildings as they are now, you can see they're much higher definition than previously. And I know a lot of players like the buildings quite a bit, but myself personally being a bit of a, an older player, seeing the other buildings and getting familiar to them, I'm finding the new buildings a little difficult to get used to simply because they're very, well, they're very brown. <laughs> the older graphics were not as good. Let's just say that. These are higher definition graphics. They look a lot better. But the color choices and the distinction between the different buildings, I'm finding a little bit difficult. Like the, the shop looks a little bit like a blacksmith now. Everything is just the same kind of color. And if I do a bit of a zoom out here, everything kind of gets squashed together in a big foresty mess. I don't know why there are so many trees on the buildings. Like if you're a new player, I think most new players agree that this is a good update and the graphics are good. But as you become a more experienced player, as you build more buildings, you want there to be a clear separation between the different buildings you have. And I'm not feeling that right now. Like I would like to see the trees disappear right away. We also have some weird stuff like some of the buildings are just very big. So if you click on the church here, you can see it clips off the top of the screen. So there's some weird UI issues still in the game, even though this is the UI update. I mean, hopefully I get used to these new graphics but i don't know if this is going to be even a further issue if you're colorblind if there is someone who's colorblind you know leave it in the comments tell me what your, your opinion is on that but it does seem like a bit of an odd one and then you've also got like things for example you got this goblin fortress over here and it doesn't look like a dungeon at all it looks an awful lot like a keep or a fortress and even again it's clipping off the top of the screen one change i am glad to see though is that in the building screen you now actually see the resources that you need to build a building. So you see they're at the top of the screen here. And also buildings that you don't have the resources for are now like in red. So I know I don't have enough resources for building a residence if I come in here. Big improvement here is that you now actually can see the materials that you're spending. Whereas in the past, it would show you the cost of the building, but it wouldn't show you the amount of materials you have and if you can actually afford it or not. One thing that's a little curious is that it only shows that you cannot build a building as in if you have the materials or not. But I would also like to see maybe the way vessel grayed out because I was hoping in this update you could actually build more way vessels so I could teleport around a bit more easy. But you can't do that. So that's a little bit unfortunate in terms of decorations. Same decorations from the previous update. And now you can also do your, your rename your area from all within this one window. I think this is a massive improvement. And like in, I said in the past, if I wanted to build a residence, it would just say 190 wood and then 190 stone. I was like, okay, so then I have to click out of here, click out of here, go in, inventory, materials. I have to scroll all the way down. And then I have to check, oh, I only have 100 stone. So I'm glad to see that has changed because that needed to change. And also, I'd be remiss not to mention the fact that you have price changes as well to your buildings. So buildings that used to cost orns now cost gold. There's a couple that still cost gold. What I'll do, I don't want to, I don't want to go through this in, like step by step. What I'll just do is I'll leave all the price changes in the description. You can see what they are. But a lot of the lower tier buildings, they used to cost orns, which is obviously a big problem if you're a new player, if you're a player under level 100. Because orns are ultimately the second most valuable resource in the game. And when you're starting out in the on your journey in Orna, you, you basically cannot afford to burn orns on buildings. And if you need a blacksmith, if you need a couple of shops to get yourself going, this can obviously be a problem. But like for me at this level, uh, like nearly a level 200 player, kind of irrelevant. I have like the orns are slowly climbing up to an impossible amount. Gold has obviously gone insane. So it doesn't really matter to me at this point anymore. Um, so it's obviously targeted at newer players. And I agree that, that the beginner player experience is going to be a lot smoother and a lot better now that buildings have improved in their prices. And Because and, like, even from a narrative point of view, it doesn't make a lot of sense why Orns, which are some kind of magical XP item or like XP type, would actually be needed to construct a building. It makes a lot more sense that buildings cost gold and materials. And I also know some of them have gone down slightly in price as well. So, I mean, overall, it's quite good in terms of narrative and in terms of the new players coming in. I think they're going to benefit a lot from that. I should mention as well that this new graphical update for Orna basically means that if you're using Android 5, you, you're basically not able to play the game anymore. <laughs> but I think that's fair enough because 
Android 5, that's, that version of Android is almost 10 years old. So I think that's reasonable for the graphic update we're getting here. Uh, just letting go of something legacy. One thing I'm, in, I'm actually quite disappointed to see here, especially since this is basically a UI update to the game, is I'm very disappointed to see, and I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm very disappointed to see that nowhere in there is there actually a feature to turn this game into a landscaped mode. You can only play it in profile, which obviously, in my case, makes making videos very difficult, but there is definitely benefits to putting it in landscape mode, and it's just not available for phone. There doesn't seem to be any option here available for phone. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. And as I said, this is a UI improvement update, so I don't know why that is not in there. So, Odie, if you're listening, I would actually put that as a number one feature. Not having landscape mode at this point on a UI update, yeah, that needs, that needs to change. So finally, we see in the herb list, we can now build more than one item at a time. And actually, you'll see right away that my, my buttons here, hold the craft, is a little bit clipped off the side of the screen. That's not an editing error on my end. That is actually literally what I see on my phone, on my screen right now. So this little um, plus minus dialogue here, that, that wasn't there before. So now it's actually pushed the hold the craft button to the side. So that's clearly a teething issue, a bug right there. If you have some issues with scaling problems with your owner game, I've actually created a guide on how to fix that. So I'll leave a link right here. I might be able to increase the resolution of my Ornigame game to fix this problem, but it does seem like a bug that the crafting menu is, is slightly to the side here. But there's something I've wanted to do for a very long time, and I hope you can enjoy it with me as well. So we've got some small elixirs, and we've got some large elixirs, and I've wanted to do this for so long. <laughs> right, 1,000, 5,000. Okay. That's very strange. I've only crafted 10 elixirs. Ah, oh, that sucks. This was actually the thing I was most excited about in the game. Oh, man. What is this? Just let, just let me craft a thousand potions. I don't want to be here all day. You know what? Let's leave this up to 10. And I'm going to also leave another one up to 10. And let's see if it lets me dual craft. I don't think it will. Let's see how the jeweler is doing. I think there hasn't been any changes to the jeweler. Yeah, as rubbish as always. Just some really rubbishy gems. I mean, it wouldn't take much just to incre increase the rarity level of these gems. And then the jeweler would actually be viable. So I don't see any real change there. And also, I don't believe there has been any changes in the UI for fishing. So let's just do the fishing. I, I intend to do a video on fishing in the future because I think it's really... An extremely bad game. It's one of the worst fishing games I've ever played. Let's not waste any time here. There's no changes here. One area that I think has improved quite a bit, actually, is the exploration mode. Now, when I play the game, I like to leave all these buttons off, except for buildings. And I'll explain why I'm leaving that in the video in a minute. But you can the, the old exploration window, which is how you gain territories, it was like a more menu interface where you couldn't see what's going on. Now if I click it, it zooms out. Oh, we don't need a reward here. It zooms out and you can now see the areas you're in. So I have this white aura around me. That's my range. That's always been there. But now in within the rings themselves, you can see the enemies. There's The interface is very clean. So when you're out and about in the real world exploring, you just click on one of these guys and it tells you like you know what battle conditions are there, what you're fighting, the level. And yeah, it's just very clean. Very easy to use, a big improvement because in the past, what would happen, especially if I was like a passenger in public transport or a car or whatever, that I would actually be stuck in a menu interface and I'd know the range of my different territories, but I couldn't visually see them. So, this visual feedback is much better. And then you can click over to control and you can see if, what areas you control and what air players are around you. So, I like the new UI for the exploration window, but there is a, a, there is a problem with regards to how the monsters appear on the screen. So if you see in the bottom right, I've got three little monsters in, in the corner there, dragon, the skeleton, and the draconian guy. But only the, the skeleton is actually within my reach in terms of my aura, but there's more monsters viewing there. I don't know why they're there. And practically speaking, there is no way to get rid of them unless I move closer to the area to get rid of them. And I actually have my, my main account. My main account, I have got more areas around my, my location and it still has more monsters appearing in the bottom corner. I find it very irritating because I want to clear... I only want to see monsters in that corner that I can actually fight. But it's like forever showing them there. If you're living in the countryside or you're like you're someone who primarily plays from home, you don't have the ability to go out and explore, having these little monsters annoying you in the corner as, like, as something that you need to accomplish but you can never reach them, 
is actually a little bit irritating. So I would definitely would like to see only the monster that's in my zone, which is actually more similar to how it was in the past. You could only see, in the previous version, you could only see the monster that was in your zone in that little indicator icon. I don't know why additional monsters have been added, especially monsters that are not within my attack range. But anyway, if I click back out of this exploration menu, you'll find a bug right away, which is that all of my uh, layers have been re-enabled. So I like to play with normally just with buildings enabled. That's how I like to play. And then I go around, explore the world, and I, 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 and that's it really. But now when I hit the exploration window and I come back in, it puts all the filters back on, which is very annoying. And also you'll notice that in the past you could actually take territories and you could like fight bosses and you could do dungeons whilst on the move. Now you can only do exploration or control, or you can do dungeons and buildings and so on. So you have to constantly kind of flick in and out, in and out. So if I'm in an area and like I beat the skeleton guy here, it's like, okay, is there anything else in the area? I need to zoom in here. Like, okay, there's a shop here. There's something going on. What else? And I, I zoom back out and I lose, I'm losing information at the same time. And look, you can even see the filter icon has disappeared. But I would have liked that I could actually filter buildings and bosses here at the bare minimum. And what about M NPC characters? I don't see any options here for NPCs. Like I can filter from on this screen here. But I don't like I can't see NPCs on the exploration window, which is a little crazy to me. So I, they've made a lot of improvements to the exploration window, but because they've sort of put buildings and dungeons and NPCs off into their own little corner, you're now actually going you're zooming in and out of this menu a lot because as you're on the move, of course you want to know what buildings are around. You want to know if there's a dungeon around you. So I guess the intention here maybe is that you're only kind of doing one of these tasks at a time. And literally the option is deleted. It's right there. It's always been there. And it only now appears when I'm out of exploration mode. So I don't know how I feel about that really. Especially if I'm a passenger in a vehicle. I don't have time to flick in and out. I am literally forced to choose. And it seems very, like a very arbitrary choice. I can't think of any gameplay reason as to why you'd want that there. If I jump back to my main character here. And check out the quest line I have here. I have the, the the quest line called the aftermath. So this is the main quest line here. I'm on, I'm on tier eight level, so I've actually gotten quite through the quest line so far. And it says right down here, a new storyline is out. Use the button below to start the rise of the unfailed storyline. And the patch notes make it very clear: if you change your quest line to the new updated quest line, you lose the old one. Now I don't have a problem with losing progression on my old quest line. I don't really care. But the one thing I do know is that later on on this quest line, you get a band of gods for completing it. So a band of gods gives you free XP and bonus orns, and it's just a very high, high level, high quality item. And I would rather finish my main quest line and get that item before beginning the unfailed quest line. And like, I can just wait. Like, I don't want to lose the items for my previous quest line. If anything, like, I don't know why that has happened why I'm forced to choose why not just let me do both as an especially as an older player and an established player who's been working towards it I'm not going to I'm not going to give up on getting my band of gods I'm going to go all the way with this and ultimately if there's another band of gods at the end of the rise of unfeld well now I just have two for my my two equipment slots so now I'm even doubly incentivized to not leave my quest line I know something weird with NPCs because I have one close by that is the perfect example of what I'm talking about here so I've got this guy here Boreal has got a job number one for me. I've got to defeat a troll. That's fine. And you'll notice that Boreal has a, an exclamation mark over his head saying that you've finished a quest for me and you need to hand it in. If I go to NPCs here, there's Boreal, job number two. And there's the troll one as well, job number one and two. So I have no way to hand in job number two. That looks like a bug. Uh, something, has, something has gone wrong between updates and I can now not hand in my quest. I'm sure you guys are having very similar problems. So there is still one very major aspect here that we need to talk about. One in particular that I think is very important to look at is actually the sleep skill. So if you're not aware, a change has been made to the sleep, the sleep skill that I want to demonstrate in combat here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on my sleep dart. And this character's fallen asleep. Now if you know how fall asleep works in the past, when a character falls asleep, I believe it has like a 50, 50 chance of coming out of sleep. Like it's, so once it wears off, it wears off. But now, if I do an attack, it will instantly throw him out of sleep. So what this does is it takes sleep. No, I'm asleep as well. That's kind of cool. What it does, it takes sleep, which was a fairly solid mid-tier effect 
I normally don't protect against sleep because I noticed in PvP and in any match I've played that, I, that even though sleep was annoying, I was never losing. I would never actually lost a match because of sleep. So in the end, I said, look, I'm not going to protect against it. There's more valuable items. But still, it went from being what would be a popular mid-tier skill to, in my opinion, now going down to a very low tier like like skill like do not even waste your time with it because it's just going to it's just going to clear up and it actually in the past it would clear off and you lose a turn but now it just clears off and I, i'm actually good to go here to fight so i'm going to show you a small workaround just because in the patch notes it says that if you take damage sleep will clear off but that's not entirely true so if i put sleep on here so the character is asleep and i'm going to use a non-damage based skill miasma you see I put Blight and Poisoned on him, and he's still asleep. And the Twilight Wisp is not able to clear off Blight. The Twilight Wisp is not able to clear off Sleep. So there you go. I have a way of causing damage to my opponent and keeping him asleep. Now I'm going to try and use a Bleed. And in this case he wakes up because it is a combat-based skill that has the chance of causing Bleed. So if you have a skill that just causes... A status effect like Sleep Dart is doing it in its own in its own right, and then you have a skill like Miasma, just a pure magical effect poison skill. And likewise, you see, I've taken the Greater Yokai with me as well, so he's also helped me out here in terms of keeping some damage over time effects on this character. This is basically the new meta for Sleep, that it's only a damage over time effect. Any other use for it is practically pointless, to be honest with you. And of course, if you're enjoying this video and you find the information useful so far, don't forget to give us a like. It definitely lets me know that you guys are enjoying this type of video and I can start making a few more in the future. We need to talk about some minor things that have occurred as well, which is the pet skills. So Valhallen Way and Valhallen Strength. So these skills are ultimately very important if you're running a pet class. Basically, if you're running a Dragoon, you need Valhallen to kick off. And it basically increases the amount of times your pet will actually fight with you in combat so i'm glad to see that yeah, that has been buffed another change that hasn't been made as well is the spike shield which only really affects gilgamesh and i do have some opinions on this and the spike shield ability which is basically sacrificing ward for damage it's been debuffed for like skill like for high tier player combat i am not really a tier, tier 10 player i can't speak too much to it it seems like a fairly minor change but one thing that really irks me a little bit about this is that a change has been made to Spike Shield. But another similar skill called Shield Bash, which you can actually unlock at level 100, has not been affected by these patch notes. So I figured if they were doing a update to Spike Shield, they would also take a second review of Shield Bash because they're both the same skill, essentially, but at different tiers. So this is another skill that will uh, convert your ward to damage. But you unlock it at level 100, that's a lot lower than the Gilgamesh skill, and in this game, your stats increase exponentially. My experience with Shield Bash in the past and presently is that Shield Bash does, it takes away like 10% of your ward or something, and then PvP, monsters, bosses, I've never got any more than zero damage using Shield Bash, even with a shield equipped, even with high attack accessories and so on. So it's a pity that Shield Bash was not also considered in the, shields, the Spike Shield update. So I feel like that is a more critical aspect because in one case we have a warrior class, the Gilgamesh, maybe it's dominating PvP a little bit, but we literally have an entire specialization here which is built around a skill that does nothing. Moving on, rapid fire, we got the Ascension. The Alter Ascension has been changed now and I've got this on my beta account here so we can just try it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my first Ascension level and I'm not sure how this works because I wanted to do it live with you guys. So let's just go for first Ascension level on the new update. So I'm now Ascension level 1. And there's this new option here. You can see I can keep going, but I can do what's called a reversal. So this will actually, it costs nothing, and it will return a percentage of the materials that you used. And I'm guessing this is going to reset the offerings needed for the next level. Because one problem that you can run into as a player, a high tier player, is that as you're increasing your Ascensions, which increases the power of your class, that you could run into a very hard material. So let's just see if that's actually what this is all about. So we got Pure Draconite, we got Greater Soul, and we got Runestone. So I'm going to reverse this. Has it reversed? Okay, so we're back down to level 0, and we now have the same requirements as before. That's interesting. So I'm going to ascend back up, and let's see if I still need the same materials for the next level. 
Okay. Same materials. I wasn't exp honestly, I was not expecting that. I'm kind of scratching my head as to why this was implemented. Or if it has been implemented, it's certainly not implemented in the way I expected it to be, or how many players I suppose would have expected it to be, as a way to an expensive way to get rid of a bad material. But as has been de demonstrated here quite clearly, it's not. It is literally just a way to get back some of your offerings for what exactly? Like I don't like what am I gonna do? Spend these orns on a pet? Gold is already infinite, and there's nothing I can do with these other materials. There comes a certain point in the game where materials are more valuable than any resource in the game, and I am literally scratching my head right now trying to figure out why you would ever want to reverse an ascension level if it's not going to change the offerings needed if you want to go back up again. Let me know in the comments if you've, if you've got any ideas as to why this has been implemented in the way it's been implemented, because for me, I just don't get it actually. I was hoping to demonstrate that it's a good way to, re to recycle your materials, but obviously it's not. So I don't know what the uh, purpose of a reversal is, because why would I ever want to reverse an ascension level if the offerings for to go back up are going to remain the same? So, wow, I mean, that needs, that needs a patch right away. One of the big things as well that was promised is that live PvP has been improved. Now, the problem with live PvP has always been that there's not that many opponents available. And you can see that that has not changed right now. I have one opponent available. Let's just try and, and get this going here, searching for opponent. I don't think I can even get a match for you guys. But this has been a, a very big part of the update that's been talked about, that live PvP is going to be improved. We now have part of it as an achievement. So if I go into achievements, you can see right here I've got the Arc Gladiator. Defeat five players in live PvP. And I can say right now, that's never going to happen. I'm actually very good at PvP. But uh, especially for my level, I see you can you actually play PvP or party as well. That's curious. I didn't. I haven't seen that before. But as you see, there's just not enough opponents available. Live PvP is dead as always. In the past, because the rewards were not very good, but nowadays that the rewards have been improved, there is now a new meta for PvP live, and that is that you play the fight with your opponent, and if at any point you start to lose the match. Just don't take your next turn and wait for the opponent to quit. There is no timeout. There is no timeout on not taking your turn. So if you're one hit away from death, just stop playing the game. Put it down for like half an hour and come back and you have won the fight because your opponent would have fled. So there's a huge problem. I've seen this problem talked about online with other Orna players that apparently we've got this big update for live PvP. But one of the fundamentals, just adding a timer t to turn so players can time out if they're trying to basically lame their way into a win. And in fact, it's basically worse than ever because that is not permitted. And as a side point to this, when it comes to dungeons, if you've ever done a dungeon with your party members, you'll know that there can be oftentimes a large delay between moves. And this is either because someone's having a connection issue or they're not aware it's their turn to go. But normally you can sort it out in party chat and say, hey, it's your turn to go up. But if you think about it, there is no timer there either. The time there should be a timeout for team play party, and there should also be a timer in live PvP, like 30 seconds, for example. If you don't make your move in 30 seconds, it passes to the next person in the turn order. That is absolutely needed for party play in dungeons, and it's also needed in live PvP. So as you can see, I'm not going to get a matchup. There should really, realistically speaking, there should be 100 players here at least. We got one. He's obviously of a different level to me, so there you go. We can't, we can't match up. So yeah, I, I'm I'm looking for a bit more there is what I'll say. And the last thing I want to talk about here is that I've heard there's been ch some changes to summoning scrolls. So I, again, I haven't tried this out yet, but let's just try summoning a new boss. So we'll hit use. No going back now. Oh, I can cancel if I like. Here's how it is. So in the past, you had public and private. Public, visible to everyone. If you're a lone player, that can be useful. Private sets it so only your party members can see, and in my experience, I have a couple of party members around, and we've had some of our our raids, world raids, getting hit by random players, so we now set them as private because we're not having issues taking the, the raids down. But the new option here is include event raids. So this is very interesting, and it's basically a check dialogue for if you want the current event raid boss to be spawned or not. So the current one at the moment is Nag Negan. And if you don't want him, you can just untick it and you'll just get a regular boss. That makes farming regular raid bosses easier, but it also leaves the event boss 
as a random inclusion if you want. You could argue, oh, why is there not one to also just do event bosses only? And the reason for that is because there is only ever really one, maybe two event bosses at any given time. It'd almost be too powerful, I guess, if you could always spawn the event boss and then you can spawn as much of them as you wanted so you can exclude event bosses but you can't do them exclusively so i understand that so you have to maybe burn three or four scrolls to get one event boss i think that's fair i think this is a good improvement although personally speaking i enjoy the variety of bosses anyway i'm not i'm not aiming for any particular raid boss and there isn't enough raid bosses anyway so i'm not too worried about well, I'm not too worried about if I get an event boss or not. So it's not awful. I'm happy enough with it. I'm glad to see we have more versatility in our summon scrolls. That's always a good thing. So what are my thoughts overall? Um, well, the thing is, like, I've talked to a lot of players online. I have my, my Discord there. You're welcome to join it. Link in the description. Like, I've talked to a lot of different players in Orna. And the one thing that always comes back to is... A lack of content so or timers on dungeons like if dungeons time out for like five or six hours it used to be a lot longer than that before covid but there's like a there's literally in the game by the way a covid buff so that you now have reduced cooldown cooldowns on gauntlets and things so yeah the thing always comes back to is you do your dailies you do your your you hit a couple of dungeons you fight a couple of monsters and there's nothing to do and even as a high tier player one thing i spend most of my time doing is fighting raid bosses and again, there isn't any new raid bosses. So yeah, just just generally speaking, the the game is a little bit light on content for uh, for a more dedicated player, somebody who plays on a regular basis. That is something that has crept up in my Discord and just in general or in a chat here and there. Like people are kind of looking for a bit more. Overall, yeah, disappointing. Disappointing. I think a lot of players were expecting more content more monsters more bosses things like that there's been a lot of hype around this release you know even within it itself regardless of the fact that it's gone through a beta there's still more minor improvements that could be made on the ui the stuff i've talked about already and yeah just the hype that this release has had in terms of revitalizing the game it just doesn't deliver i've been your host jolo and if you enjoyed watching this video all the way to the end thank you please check out my orna playlist have a good day my friends